A man was seen leaning against a wooden fence that was in disrepair. The man grunted in annoyance because it had been half a month since he was in a place that was considered hell. The man's face also looked very tired and weak because he was currently very hungry. The man said an elder had deliberately trapped him in that place. Even though all this time the man had tried to hide as well as possible so that his existence was not caught. But because he was caught, the man was finally attacked by the demon clan and received severe injuries. Now the man decides to find a way to heal his wounds as soon as possible. Because if he doesn't recover soon, then the man will not be able to return to earth again. Even the man said he would not be able to take his revenge. But now there was a problem facing the man. Because his cultivation base had disappeared, he couldn't get out of the mountain. And without that cultivation base, the man wasn't sure he could safely get out of the mountain, and now he hoped that no monsters would come his way. But suddenly, there was a white tiger with fiery red eyes behind the man. The animal could be seen groaning so loudly that the man was shocked. It turned out that the tiger was no ordinary animal, but the monster could speak human language. The tiger looked very upset that the man kept hiding. The man didn't expect the tiger to still be chasing him. The red-eyed tiger stepped closer to the man with a very tense look. The tiger said that the man had nothing now because his spiritual roots and spiritual power had been damaged. The tiger said that the man was nothing more than an ordinary human being. The man looked very nervous and scared. He thought maybe today was his death. But the man did not accept that he had to die now. The man admitted that until today he had never touched a woman's hand at all. Suddenly the system informed him that the man was now in danger because he was facing a monster. The system also informed that the danger factor of the monster was very high. So the sword domain system will be activated by the system immediately. The system also told him that all the sword power was centered on the manor. In addition, within the coverage area, the swordsmanship is invincible and can conquer the entire world. The system explained that within the invincible domain of the sword, the sword had tremendous power, and all kinds of swords would be subject to the host. After seeing all the notices, the man's eyes lit up, because today was exactly three years that he had been tormented. The man was very moved. Why, after all this time, the power had just appeared. Meanwhile, the white tiger looked very upset that the man was ignoring him. Feeling angry, the tiger roared with its mouth wide open. Not long after, the man had an extraordinary sword in his hand. The man was very curious how strong the sword domain was. The tiger said that the man was just an ordinary human and would never be able to defeat him. The white tiger opened its mouth as wide as possible and tried to attack the man. The man now looked very calm and immediately swung the sword in his hand to strike the tiger. There was a dazzling yellow light coming out of the sword. Meanwhile, in the mortal world, a man was seen sitting on a throne. The man looked very upset because there was a human who was known to have dared to split the sky. The man then sent a counterattack. Elsewhere, in the Soul Requiem Cave, a man with a robe and a skull face was seen watching what was happening in the sky. The skull-headed man could clearly see that there was a force emerging from the divine cauldron of the Nine Heavens. The skull-headed man guessed. It seemed like the divine emperor had already taken an action. But the skull-headed man was actually confused as to what was going on. At the same time, located in the 10,000 Immortal Sword Sect, precisely in the Heavenly Sword Pavilion, a person could be seen standing at the top of a tower. The man seemed to be watching something streaking across the blue sky. The man was also watching the yellow-colored light that was the immortal sword that was splitting the sky. The white-haired man was certain that it was the peak of the legendary sword Tao. In a different place, in the mortal world to be precise, a man with a very happy face saw something streaking in the sky and called the yellow light a heavenly artifact. The man also called the sight an unprecedented opportunity. The people in that place immediately shouted to send all the disciples in the sect immediately, because it was a great opportunity for them. A man on a throne chair asked all his men to carry out his orders. The man said there was someone in the mortal realm who had just split the heavens and had already hit the divine cauldron that suppressed the nine realms. The man then ordered the four great generals in front of him 
to immediately descend into the mortal realm and find the divine cauldron of the nine heavens by any means. The man also told the four generals to kill everyone who tried to obstruct his orders. The four generals finally set out to fulfill the mission given by the ruler. Meanwhile, the man who had just defeated the tiger seemed surprised by the power of the sword's domain. The man didn't know what sword chi the man actually possessed. After killing the tiger monster, the system informed him that he had earned 400 sword points and a starter reward package. The man didn't understand what sword points meant. It turned out that sword points were the currency needed to expand the range of the invincible sword domain, and every hundred points could increase the sword domain area by one meter. Now the man understood, since he had just killed one third stage tiger, then his invincible sword domain had already expanded to 14 meters. But the man actually still regretted that the domain was still very small at the moment. Hence, the man with blue eyes decided to use the starter reward package. The system then informed him that the invincible sword domain had been expanded by 10 meters, so the current size of the sword domain was 24 meters. The system also announced that the invincible sword domain had been upgraded to level 1. The system even said that the man could now use everything as a sword. The man did not expect that he would gain such tremendous power. Perhaps even the leaf in front of him could now become a sword. To prove this, the man finally picked up a leaf in front of him. The man tried to swing the leaf like a sword. Not long after, the leaf that was thrown could split a large stone in two. The man was truly amazed to see the greatness of the invincible sword domain, where he could use everything as a sword. The man seemed unsatisfied. He then tested his skills again by taking a piece of wood. Before long, the man could see the incredible wood carving. The man looked very happy. He said, the power he possessed was not only surprising, but also had great precision. Now the man asked the system if the domain of the invincible sword had been established. The system told him that the domain of the invincible sword was already set at the beginning of the system. The system also said that the domain could not be changed or moved. Meanwhile, it said the host could level up and thus expand the sword domain by earning sword points first. The system also warned the host that by leaving the domain without permission, the host would lose all upgrades. Seeing the warning, the man with blue eyes concluded that if he stepped out of the domain, he would probably become a weakling again. Feeling very hungry, the man decided to spend about half a day looking for food. Finally, the man managed to get some mushrooms, but the amount was not too much. The man looked very sad and wished he could get some meat. When the man was eating his food, suddenly another monster appeared. The animal seemed to jump up and was ready to pounce on the man, but suddenly the man's eyes lit up. The man felt that something he had just wanted had just come true. Right in front of him was now delicious meat to eat. The animal seemed very surprised that he was getting pressure from the man. Suddenly the man pulled out a soup spoon. The white-furred animal didn't expect a demon king like him to be defeated with a soup spoon. After a while, some people came to the man's place and called him a demon. The man was astonished as to why these strangers had come to his place. One of them, a blue-haired woman, asked the man why he dared to take their prey. The prey in question was a white-furred animal. The man suddenly swung the soup spoon in his hand and made a vibration that made the strangers almost fall down. The three men knew that the man with blue eyes had extraordinary strength. One of the three men asked his two friends to step back first. One of the three men saw that the man with blue eyes had the power of the sword of all things. The brown-haired man said that the man they were fighting had great strength. The man wondered who the black-haired man really was. The brown-haired man guessed that the black-haired man was probably a grandmaster who was in exile. The blue-haired girl asked her senior, Duan Xiuwen, what exactly was going on. Meanwhile. The black-haired man looked very sad because all his soup was now spilled and could no longer be saved. Duan Xiuwen replied that the black-haired man had the absolute divine art of the sword of all things. Duan Xiuwen called that strength something that even the strongest elders of the sword immortal sect would never be able to achieve. But apparently, on the other hand, the black-haired man was still very grateful that there was still soup left. The black-haired man 
was astonished as to why the three people looked so surprised at his strength just now. The man with blue eyes then asked the three people if they were reinforcements from the dog that had just attacked him. Suddenly the three people seemed to be very polite with the black-haired man. Duan Xuwen said they were actually chasing the dog. Duan Xuwen said that the dog with white fur was one of the most powerful demons. Duan Xuwen said that if the monster did not have extraordinary strength, then there was no way the dog could escape from them. The man with blue eyes could feel the flow of sword chi on the three people's bodies, although it was very faint. The black-haired man guessed that perhaps those three people were sword cultivators. The man was curious. Who exactly were those three people? Duan Xiuwen preceded his two companions to introduce themselves. It was known that they were from the Holy Sword Immortal Sect. Next, the blue-haired girl introduced herself as Mulan Mulan, and the girl with pink hair introduced herself as Tak Si Yu. Duan Xiuwen mentioned that the two girls were his juniors. Tak Si Yu apologized to the man for disturbing his peace. Duan Xiuwen bowed with a respectful attitude. It was a very urgent situation but they didn't think of coming to the existence of a black-haired man so rashly. Duan Xiuwen, on behalf of his friends, apologized to the man. But the man with blue eyes looked very relaxed while playing with the soup spoon. The man with blue eyes looked very surprised as the three cultivators bowed down to apologize to him. The black-haired man thought, since when was a sword cultivator so easy to compromise with? Then the man asked, what was the fate of the dog they called a demon? Duan Xiuwen said, the dog now belonged to the man because they had disturbed his time. Duan Xiuwen also asked permission to leave and said, they would come visit the man next time. In his heart, Duan Xiuwen thought of immediately reporting to their master about the power of the black-haired man to his master. Duan Xiuwen then invited Mulan and Tak si Yu to immediately rush away from there. But suddenly the black-haired man asked them not to leave in a hurry. The three people looked very surprised. The man with blue eyes said the dog would not have come to his place if the three people had not chased him. The man said he would not take other people's rights for free. The man then threw his wood carving to the three of them. The three smiled and thanked the man. Duan Xiaowen even called the man a senior. The black-haired man asked the three of them to be careful. The man said that dog meat should not be wasted because he had to process it immediately. Meanwhile, in the vast expanse of the sky, there was an eagle carrying an object similar to a jug on both legs. The animal was extremely happy that a heavenly stone emperor like himself had managed to obtain a divine artifact that had fallen into the mortal world. It was possible, after the heavenly stone emperor had successfully evolved his divine body. Now the animal was sure that the entire world would bow under his feet. When the bird was busy flying, it suddenly saw the dog in the place of the man with blue eyes. The eagle said that the dog was the demon king of the dark night. The eagle was very curious as to what the dog was doing there. Suddenly the man saw the black-haired man and immediately shouted very strongly. The eagle saw the man preparing the fireplace. The eagle called the man a madman. The eagle immediately flew down to where the man was. The eagle seemed unhappy that the man had dared to beat the demon king. The eagle did not accept seeing its fellow dark demon king being attacked by an ordinary human figure. The eagle immediately flew down and intended to kill the man. But suddenly it was like something was attacking the eagle. So the eagle's attack failed to hit the man. The eagle looked very surprised and cried out in pain. The eagle's eyes widened in shock. Meanwhile, the man wondered if something was happening in the sky. Suddenly the eagle fell right in front of the man. The black-haired man looked very surprised. The man wondered how a bird and a furnace could fall. Suddenly the system announced that the host had successfully killed the demon emperor and obtained 40,000 sword domain points. Now the man's invincible sword domain had reached level 2. And now the range has increased to 424 meters. The man didn't expect that the big bird that fell in front of him was a rank 7 demon emperor. Though the man originally thought that if his sword domain attacked the furnace, it would be the bird. The man thought, it was possible that the eagle had just passed through the sword domain that was in the air, 
And finally, the domain automatically activated the sword domain's defense mechanism. Now the man felt truly shuddered by the power of the invincible sword domain as it could kill a demon emperor. The man felt very lucky and happy that it was his lucky time, because the bird had brought a stove to his place. The man was now happy because today, he would not only eat meat, but would also eat bird mushroom soup. It wasn't long before the dark demon king, a.k.a. the dog, woke up. The animal felt a tremendous headache. The animal guessed that it seemed like he had just been made unconscious by someone. The dog just remembered that the person who made him unconscious was the cooking man in front of him. But the dog's eyes widened when he saw the eagle next to him. The dog wondered why the eagle, which he called the noble one, was in that place. The animal seemed even more surprised to see the eagle's head separated from its body. Meanwhile, the man looked very calm while preparing all the spices. The furnace carried by the eagle was also used by the man to cook water. After hearing the dog scream, the man turned his head and saw a bone in his mouth. The dog seemed genuinely surprised that the eagle was actually made into soup by the man. But the dog's surprise didn't end there. He saw the man using a divine furnace that fell from the sky to cook the soup. The dog really couldn't believe that the cook would even use the holy panic to make a soup. Now the dog could understand that the man wasn't actually an ordinary person. The dog suspected that the black-haired man was an extremely terrifying hidden cultivator and an unrivaled individual. Now that the dog's and the man's eyes met, the dog guessed that it was his turn to be the soup after the man ate the eagle. The dog looked both confused and bewildered. He didn't know what he had to do to avoid this terrible event. Meanwhile, the man was wondering why the dog looked so surprised. The man guessed that the dog must be a demonic monster. But the man didn't care about the status of the dog, because the most important thing was that the taste of the dog meat could fill his stomach. The man with blue eyes said, outside the mountain there were indeed many demonic beasts, but he also couldn't get out of that place. And for him to have a dog now was a tremendous blessing, because the man knew it was rare to find a piece of dog meat. The dog roared and told the man not to come any closer and said his meat was not tasty at all. The dog looked so scared and spoke in animal language, the man couldn't just corner it. But the man with blue eyes smiled and continued to step closer to the dog. The dog looked even more frightened now. Its whole body was shaking violently. The dog kept crying out and forbidding the man from eating its meat. The dog begged the man not to kill him. The dog also said that it still had great hope to live. The dog appeared to be crying because it was so scared. The dog said he would surrender himself to the man. The black-haired man seemed to understand what the dog was saying. The dog looked like it was begging him not to be killed. Now the dog seemed to roll his body back and forth and cry. The dog kept saying he didn't want to die. But finally the man put the butcher knife back and decided to make the dog his home guard. Finally, the man told the dog that he could stay and guard his house from now on. The dog looked even more tearful because he never expected a demon king like him to end up being a human pet dog. The man with blue eyes said he couldn't let the dog starve because now he had decided to take care of the dog. The man then gave the dog the bones of the demon emperor, a.k.a. the eagle. The dog's eyes looked wide-eyed in shock. The dog really didn't expect that he was even ordered to eat a noble bone that was higher than him. The dog muttered, the black-haired man was really too much. The man smiled and seemed to be waiting for the dog to eat the bone. The dog seemed silent for a moment. But finally, the dog thought, his safety was more important than anything, even if he had to turn into a guard dog in the end. It was better than him having to die in the hands of the man. Finally, the dog tried to lick the eagle's bone while muttering that now he had disappointed the noble one. Finally, Duan Xiaowen, Mulan, and Tak Si Yu had returned to their sect. The three then saluted the master. The master looked very surprised why the three disciples had returned. Duan Xiaowen explained that they had previously been ordered to go to Mount Shiwan to look for divine weapons. Duan Xiaowen reported that they were unable to obtain the weapon, but Duan Xiaowen reported that they managed to meet an unrivaled expert. Duan Xiaowen said that person could use anything as a sword. Duan Xiaowen said, 
Perhaps the person they just met could help their sect to suppress the blood demons. The master really didn't believe Duan Xiuwen's words, because to the master there was no way anyone could have that kind of power. The master even called Duan Xiuwen already talking nonsense because the master knew the mountains were only filled with demons. So it was impossible for an expert to live in seclusion in such a barren place. The master also said, if such a person did exist, the man Duan Xiuwen mentioned would not be able to hide from an orifice-level sword cultivator like the master. Duan Xiuwen said he never dared to deceive the master and everything he said was true. Duan Xiuwen asked the master to consider his words again. The master let out a long sigh and stated that their holy sword immortal sect had been passed down for tens of thousands of years. The master informed that there were only three sword cultivators who had succeeded in making sword intent so far. And about the sword of all things, the master said it was something that even the first generation could never achieve. Taxiyu tried to defend Duan Xiuwen and said that the three of them could sense the man's heavenly sword intent. The master completely disbelieved the three disciples' words and said that they were just talking nonsense right now. The master even mentioned that the three of them were still in the realm of hardening their bodies. So it was only natural for the three of them to think that everything in front of them was strong. The master seemed to be getting more and more passionate and shrunk that sword intent was not a simple thing. And the master said that sword intent was very difficult to realize. The master said that Duan Xiuwen, Mulan, and Taxiyu had never even met an actual sword intent. So according to the master, the three of them must have been fooled by the trash trick. The master also mentioned that if there was a peerless expert in their world who could wield a sword of any kind, there should have been many rumors about it. The master continued his remarks and said the three of them should behave like disciples in other sects who left their sects and never returned. The master told the three disciples that the blood demon seal was getting weaker, where the master and his colleagues could no longer maintain the seal. The master mentioned that Mulan, Taxiyu, and Duan Xiuwen were still very young. The master did not want the three of them to become victims of the master's funeral objects. The three disciples looked very surprised and asked what their master would do. The master said that when the blood demon was completely free, then he and the other elders would fight all the demons to the death. The master even said they were willing to sacrifice their lives so that the demon army would not return. After saying that, suddenly a mysterious voice laughed at the master's words. The master looked very surprised because he knew it was the voice of the demon. The master began to panic and wondered if their time was up. Suddenly, the demon spoke. Thousands of years ago, they had all tried hard to suppress his power. The demon said all the human ancestors even destroyed their Taoist bodies to prevent the demon from appearing in their world. But they all eventually failed and fell into the abyss of blood and then became the devil's food. However, the demon said that this had happened thousands of years ago and the demon said that he was not the trash that humanity thought he was. The demon seemed to smile mockingly and questioned the humans if they would never be able to defeat him. After hearing the voice of the demon, the master then gave orders to all his companions to follow all his orders. The master asked them to immediately activate the holy sword formation. The masters along with the other elders finally activated the formation but it turned out that the formation did not apply at all to the demon who was being sealed. The demon even called everything done by the masters completely useless. The demon said that thousands of years ago he had already destroyed the holy sword formation. It wasn't long before the holy sword formation was completely destroyed by the demon. This made the master cough up blood. The master said that the situation was getting dangerous for them. Meanwhile, the demon was seen laughing out loud and said in a dismissive tone, the demon said that their strength would never be able to fight him. Mulan, Duan Xiuwen, and Taxiyu looked very worried. Meanwhile, the master asked the three disciples to leave the sect immediately. The master asked his three disciples to spread the word if the blood demon's seal was fully opened. The demon chuckled and then surfaced. The demon mentioned that it looked like the people from the Holy Sword sect were about to escape. 
The demon looked like it wouldn't let the three sect disciples get away with it. The demon shouted, they must all die on the spot. A tremendous power emerged from the demon. Taksiyu seemed to fall down, but suddenly the girl's expression changed instantly when she saw the carved wooden doll given by the black-haired man suddenly fly into the air. The wooden puppet seemed to emit an unusual power and made the demon very surprised. The demon did not expect that there was such an extraordinary power of Taoist sword intent there. The demon couldn't imagine how that could happen. The blue-eyed man's strength seemed to counter the demon's strength. It wasn't long before the wood carving fell to the floor and made everyone there look very surprised. The master looked very surprised and couldn't believe that the blood demon had been stopped by the power released from the wooden carving doll. The master then picked up the wood carving and asked all his colleagues and children to worship the wood carving. And the master designated the wood carving as a precious treasure of their holy sword immortal sect. In addition, the master also mentioned that all sect members must understand the will of the sword within the wood carving. All the sect members looked very happy and said that heaven would never leave their sacred sword immortal sect. They said that their lives were saved because of the power in the wood carvings. The master was very grateful to Mulan, Tak Si Yu, and Duan Xiu Wen for bringing the treasure into the sect. The master also mentioned that he would never forget the services of his three disciples. Now the master was very curious and asked Mulan, Tak Si Yu, and Duan Xiu Wen to tell him about a senior they met on Mount Xiuan. Duan Xiu Wen then began all their stories. From the beginning of their meeting with the senior to the end, they could see the extraordinary power of the senior. Then before the three of them said goodbye to the senior, the senior gave the wood carving to the three of them as a token of appreciation for volunteering their hunting dogs. And after a few minutes of telling the story of the three disciples' encounter with the so-called senior, the master looked very surprised and did not expect that the wood carving brought by them was only made of ordinary wood carvings. The master really didn't expect that just by putting the sword intent left behind inside the wood carving, it could finally kill a blood demon. After hearing the stories of his students, the master mentioned that the power of the senior figure was extremely terrifying. The master seemed very curious as to how far the supreme master's power had gone. The master wondered if the black-haired man had actually reached the tribulation stage, or even Mahayana. However, other elders said that the spiritual energy in their world today was no longer what it used to be, making it difficult for people to cultivate to the tribulation stage, let alone to Mahayana. Finally, the master decided to see for himself what was really going on with the man. The master then asked Mulan to take the divine vermilion sword and the holy land. The master also asked Mulan to follow the master to visit the blue-eyed man. The blue-haired girl looked very surprised when she heard the master ask her to take the divine vermilion sword. As the disciple knew, the sword was one of the treasures of the immortal sect of the holy sword of their sect. The other elders also looked very worried as their master even wanted to give away their sect's precious treasure. In addition, the other elders also tried to remind them that the Holy Land was one of the treasures brought by the Master's ancestors from the Immortal Land. But suddenly the Master snapped at all of them and revealed they didn't even know anything. Looking very upset, the Master explained that the wood carving he was holding was also a very rare treasure. The Master also asked his elders and disciples how they could visit the man empty-handed. The master even mentioned that their sect's treasure might not be comparable to the supreme master's wood carving. Meanwhile, in his heart, the master thought he would not hesitate if he had to curry favor with the supreme master. The master even thought that he could prostrate himself before the supreme master if necessary. The master also said it would be fortunate if the supreme master could teach their sect a few martial arts techniques, a trick or two especially if they could cultivate sword intent so that the holy sword immortal sect could survive for generations to come. The master looked so excited that he burst out laughing. Everyone there was a little surprised by the master's demeanor. Duan Shi Wen even said that the master was exactly what he expected, someone who always spoke honestly and very openly. Another elder said the master had thought everything through. 
They also did not wonder why the master could stand out so much among his peers and eventually become the head of the Holy Sword Immortal Sect. Meanwhile, at the manor, the black-haired man was seen relaxing, and next to him was the dog. The man with blue eyes said that he had spared the dog's life. But the man felt very upset because the dog did not carry out his duty to guard the house and was instead lazing around. Because the man was upset, he kicked the dog. Meanwhile, the dog muttered to himself that he was a demon king and didn't deserve to be treated like that by the man. The dog stared at the man with a sharp gaze and muttered, still remembering how people were terrified of him. At that time, the dog felt that he was very cool and extraordinary. But now the dog was treated very badly by the man. The dog never thought that he would have to surrender to the strength of the black-haired man. For the dog, this man is really too much. The dog was seen barking and letting out his heart because he was so upset. Even now, in the man's eyes, the dog seemed to be plowing the ground. The man was astonished as to what kind of dog was in front of him now. Since the man knew that the dog had plowing skills, he pulled the dog's body and asked the dog to help. The man said he was planning to plant something in the yard. The dog looked very helpless and could not resist the man. The dog barked and kept crying as if asking for help. The dog really hoped that someone could save his life now. Meanwhile, elsewhere, there was a girl named Sun Yulian who was flying in the air using a sword as her foothold. But suddenly, Sun Yulian felt very upset because now she felt that she had used too much spiritual energy. Now the girl was worried that if she did not move quickly, then her enemy would catch up with her sooner or later. But while flying in the air, Sun Yulian seemed to see a manor located in the southern wilderness. Actually, Sun Yulian felt a little strange, but she thought that she should go to the manor first, rather than being caught by her enemies. After descending and landing at the manor, Sun Yulian felt very grateful because she saw someone there. Sun Yulian thought it was likely that the man she saw was an ordinary person for daring to live in seclusion in a hundred thousand lonely mountains. As the girl was about to approach the man, Sun Yulian suddenly felt a strange power. Sun Yulian realized that around the manor there was a legendary sword intent protecting the place. Sun Yulian also felt that if she moved just a little, then she could be killed in just one slash. Seeing Sun Yulian's arrival, the black-haired man was quite surprised that someone had come to the manor again. The man wondered why the place was so crowded when the manor was just a wilderness. Suddenly the dog jumped up and barked. The dog was very happy that finally someone else had come to the place. Now the dog hoped that Sun Yulian could distract the man and save him. Finally, Sun Yulian was able to land below safely. She saw that the man in front of her was very young. Sun Yulian even felt that the breath of the man with blue eyes was the same as an ordinary person. Sun Yulian felt that this couldn't be the case, because the girl knew that those who could cultivate sword intent must be cultivators with extraordinary strength. Sun Yulian had also heard that some old monsters also often pretended to look weak. Therefore, Sun Yulian finally gave a respectful greeting to the man and apologized for being presumptuous in entering the place. Sun Yulian begged the man called Senior to forgive her. The man looked very astonished. Why again the people who came always referred to him as a senior? Now the man wondered if he actually looked so old in the eyes of others. The man then asked Sun Yulian what she meant by coming to his place. The man also said that he did not intend to blame the girl. Before Sun Yulian could answer the man's question, suddenly several people suddenly appeared with their swords. Behind them was also a monster with a very large size. Sun Yulian looked very panicked, she told the man. Currently, the Guangling Immortal Gate had cooperated with the Demon Clan army. Sun Yulian also mentioned that they all wanted to capture the girl and offer her body to the Demon King as a concubine. Sun Yulian admitted that she had rejected the plan, and Sun Yulian did not expect that the Guangling Immortal Gate would slaughter the people in her family. Sun Yulian said at this time only she escaped and managed to survive, therefore Sun Yulian really needed help from the man. After hearing the explanation from the girl, the man looked wide-eyed in shock when he heard about Guangling's immortal gate. The man knew that the sect was one of the places known for upholding the value of honesty. Therefore, 
The man wondered why the holy sect would do such a heinous thing and even ally with a demon clan. He knew the world of immortal cultivation was filled with open and secret struggles, so he didn't think he could just listen to the woman's testimony alone. Even though the man realized that as long as he was in the manor, no one could defeat his strength, the man did not want to be someone who was used by others. Sun Yulian kept begging the man to save her because if the man didn't, then Sun Yulian would probably die. Sun Yulian's face looked very pleading. Finally, the man spoke up and asked the girl to calm down. He said that as long as he was there, no one would be able to hurt or take her away. Now the man thought to see the situation first and ascertain how strong the enemy would be. Finally, the blue-eyed man, along with Sun Yulian and the dog, welcomed the arrival of the people from the immortal Guangling sect. The man was curious as to why those people had come to his place. One of them whispered to someone called a senior. The brown-haired man said that Sun Yulian looked very tired and asked the senior to catch the girl as soon as possible. The junior asked what the senior was really thinking, but suddenly the senior yelled at the junior and called him a fool, the senior said that the black-haired man owned a manor and that he was definitely not an ordinary person. The senior also said that there were many kinds of crouches and dragons hiding in the cultivation world. So to the senior, the man with blue eyes could be an expert. The senior also reminded his junior that they were still in the foundation building stage, so they should be careful with the manor owner and not offend him. But the junior tried to remind the senior. That place was the border between the demon clan and the immortal world, so the junior doubted if there were really people doing seclusion in that place. The junior also mentioned that the black-haired man didn't look strong at all. The junior also mentioned that the dog next to the man looked completely harmless. But the senior tried to warn the junior they couldn't just act rashly. Since they were all currently away from their place, they had to be careful. Finally. The senior greeted the manor owner. The senior said they were all disciples of the Guangling Immortal Sect, and they were pursuing and wanted to catch the traitor of their sect, who was none other than Sun Yulian. The senior asked the black haired man not to fall for Sun Yulian's trick. The senior explained that Sun Yulian had actually practiced evil arts and sacrificed her entire family. The senior also said that Sun Yulian had injured a disciple of their sect. Who was trying to capture her. The senior had no idea that Sun Yulian was now trying to deceive the man. The senior begged the black-haired man to look closely at Sun Yulian's face and asked the man not to be deceived by the girl's beauty. The colleagues of the Guangling Immortal Sect smiled and didn't realize that the senior called Yu had such good acting skills. Yu also yelled at Sun Yulian as to why the girl had caused so much trouble for the sect. Sun Yulian really felt unacceptable with all the words from Yu. The girl pointed to Yu's face and said that the immortal Guangling Gate had collaborated with the devil, and they all wanted to send the girl to the Demon King. While crying, the girl explained that Sun Yulian's father actually intended to spread all the crimes committed by the Guangling people, but they ended up killing Sun Yulian's father, including all her family members. Now, the dog wondered if there was a demon king who liked a human girl today. Meanwhile, the black-haired man said that the two of them didn't seem to be lying, so the man really didn't know what to do to determine who was right and who was wrong. Suddenly, a bull-like monster came and asked the disciples of the Guangling Immortal Sect why they were silent and didn't immediately arrest the girl. Sun Yulian looked very scared and immediately grabbed the black-haired man's hand. Yu looked a little surprised by the monster's arrival. Yu said there was someone who was protecting Sun Yulian. But the group of monsters actually called those who were there as trash. The monster was also very annoyed that they had all delayed the king's wedding because of a mere mortal. The monster called the cultivator disciples of the Guangling Immortal Sect truly trash. Yu looked very frightened at the arrival of the monsters, while his other juniors also felt the same way. Yu was suddenly confused and didn't understand why the beasts in front of him had general-level strength. Now Yu thought that let the man who owns the manor attack the beasts. Because Yu knew cultivators from the demon clan had physical body strength comparable to magic weapons. They are also invulnerable to swords and guns. 
You hoped that the black-haired man could fight the demon clan's army. You also thought, maybe besides getting the girl, they could also get the demon pill. The bull then approached the man with blue eyes and asked if the monster wanted to fight with him. Sun Yulian knew that one of the fortress demons was a demon general, and even the demon was known to have several foundations. But the girl was sure that the black-haired man would be able to face all the monsters without any problems. Finally, the man spoke up and said that he really didn't expect the Gwangling Immortal Sect to actually cooperate with the demon clan. Meanwhile, the dog looked forward to the incredible show between the man and the demon clan army. The black-haired man seemed to pick up a small wooden branch lying on the ground. The man asked all the demon troops to come forward together and asked them not to waste their time. The bull looked very annoyed at the black-haired man's arrogant behavior. The man was seen swinging the small wooden branch and his face also looked very relaxed. Using the branch as a weapon, the man was finally able to slash the bull general's body parts one by one. The man muttered under some conditions, high-end materials like the bull only needed simple methods. The remaining two bulls were shocked to see their comrade's body cut into pieces. The same was true of the disciples from the Guangling Immortal Sect. They were very surprised to see the extraordinary power of the man. While Sun Yulian also didn't expect the man with blue eyes to only use a twig to kill the demon general, and it only took about a second. Sun Yulian felt that the man had a very terrifying sword intent. Sun Yulian guessed that maybe the senior's strength was already at the nascent soul stage, or even at the spirit transformation stage. Suddenly, Sun Yulian's face looked happy and thought that maybe all her grudges against the sect people would be avenged. At the same time, the dog looked very upset that all the bulls were useless. After successfully killing the ordinary level demon general, the man managed to get a hundred sword points. The man looked a little disappointed that he had only gotten eight hundred points. But he felt grateful, rather than getting nothing. You, who saw this, said that the black-haired man was actually just hiding his strength. The man's eyes were very sharp and threatening. You now looked very scared and said that the man was actually pretending to be a pig and then caught a tiger. You knew that the man had unrivaled strength. You then looked down and cried. The man said he had misunderstood the black-haired man. Meanwhile, the other two bull demons finally ran away to save themselves. The two bulls said they would immediately report it to the demon king. But of course, the man would not let his prey slip away. He then stomped his wooden branch and made all the enemies unable to move at all. You saw the incredible strength of the man. The black-haired man approached you and asked what misunderstanding the man had just said. You looked very scared and very nervous now. His face also looked very pale, but it turned out that the black-haired man did not want to give you a chance to speak. The man seemed to lift the branch up and bid you farewell. But suddenly, the man thought of something. If he killed you now, then the people in the Gwangling Immortal Gate and the Demon King clan should not know what happened. And if the enemy didn't know, everything should be safe and they wouldn't come to the manor. The man looked terrified that he would lose all of his hard-earned experience points, but the dog's face looked very mocking and asked the man to kill you. Finally, the man thought of using you to bring more people to his place, and thus, the man could finally increase his sword domain. Finally, the man held out his hand and said that this time he would forgive you. The man then ordered you to go tell the sect leader and the demon king that Sun Yulian was currently under the man's protection. Sun Yulian looked very happy to hear the manor owner's words. The man then ordered you to leave there immediately if he didn't want to die. Yu's face looked very surprised. The same thing happened with the dog. Yu did not expect if he was left alive by the Supreme Master. Yu immediately ran to save himself and returned to his place. Suddenly the senior coughed and made Sun Yulian feel very worried. Sun Yulian then confirmed whether the man was okay. But the man replied that he was fine and only received minor injuries. The manor owner took a chance on the girl who was helping him to walk. The dog who saw this was very upset and said that the man had very bad acting.
Meanwhile, Yu was still not far away and actually felt very creeped out by the strength of the black-haired man. But Yu wondered, if there really was someone who could use such great sword intent, why the black-haired man was not known by anyone. Yu was sure that there must be something strange in that place. Therefore, Yu decided to return to the sect and tell his master. Yu still hasn't given up and said the humiliation he got today would be doubled back to the black-haired man. After being helped to walk by Sun Yulian, the man said that his condition was now fine, while the dog looks very upset by that. The dog felt like beating the man, but Sun Yulian was still very worried and confirmed whether the senior was really okay. Smiling, the man said he was indeed fine now and asked the girl not to worry too much. Sun Yulian said she felt scared because the senior had let you go just like that. Sun Yulian said that Guangling's immortal gate would definitely not remain silent. But the man's attitude actually looks very relaxed. He even picked his ears and showed a dismissive facial expression. The man said that the Guangling people seemed like people who didn't give up easily. Sun Yulian explained that some of the elders of the Guangling immortal gate sect were at the nascent soul level or even out of body, son. Yulian really felt very grateful to the man for saving her life. But son Yulian still felt worried, because now the senior was in a dangerous situation. Finally, the man spoke up about the anxiety felt by son Yulian. The man said the girl did not need to worry while in his manner. The man also said he promised that no one would be able to hurt son Yulian as long as he was alive. Sun Yulian really didn't expect to hear such words. Sun Yulian saluted the senior and said that the man was very kind. Sun Yulian also said that she didn't know what to do in order to repay all the kindness from the senior. Now Sun Yulian even offered to become the man's student. Sun Yulian also said if the man would accept herself as a student, then Sun Yulian promised to serve the senior. The man with blue eyes looked very surprised to hear Sun Yulian's statement. Although he realized that no one could defeat him in the sword domain, he also knew that he was basically just a flawed human with no cultivation base. The man didn't even know what he should teach Sun Yulian if he accepted the girl as his disciple. Finally, the man said he couldn't accept Sun Yulian as a disciple. The man admitted that he had never accepted a single student. Suddenly, the system informed him that Kendo's body had been detected and the search would open. The system asked the man to bring the owner of the kendo body to the manor door so that the man could get a special reward. The man looks a little shocked at the notification from the system. Meanwhile, Sun Yulian looked very sad because the senior must have looked down on the girl because the man had an unexpected cultivation. Moreover, Sun Yulian knew that the two of them were not close relatives, so there was no way the senior would accept her as a disciple. Suddenly and unexpectedly, the man approached Sun Yulian and said that he had never accepted disciples, but Sun Yulian was an exception. The man took her by the shoulders and said that starting today, Sun Yulian was officially his first student. Sun Yulian felt very happy because finally the senior was willing to accept her. But the man asked Sun Yulian not to call him senior. Suddenly Sun Yulian's face blushed and thought it seemed like the senior had another purpose while the dog looks very annoyed at the behavior of the man. But Sun Yulian tried to dismiss her bad thoughts and she thought that the senior had risked his life to save her. And now Sun Yulian is determined to do anything for the senior, especially if the senior can avenge all his grudges. Finally, Sun Yulian salutes the man and says that from today, she will be a student of the teacher. Suddenly the system told him that the kendo body was an innate divine body that was very rare in the world and that the kendo body was known to have developed chi since birth. The system also told him that, after accepting Sun Yulian as a student, the man would get a special gift. The man seemed very happy about it, and he even laughed a few times. The gift the host received was a skill called sword intent. The system said that by implanting a sword with that skill, a being could be enlightened. The man looked a little surprised as he thought for a moment. How could one infuse sword chi? because the man knew in that domain his sword chi was unlimited. Out of curiosity, the man finally decided to see how the skill he had just obtained worked. The man then pointed his hand in front of a tree trunk that looked withered. 
But with the man's strength, the tree that already looked like it was going to die had very dense leaves again. Sun Yulian was really very surprised to see that. While the dog seemed to be rolling on the ground and said that the vitality possessed by the man was really very strong and extraordinary. Even now the dog is also getting the effects of the man's strength and the injuries on his body can recover very quickly. The dog thinks that the strength possessed by the man has never been found in that world. So the dog thinks that the black-haired man must be an immortal. However, the man seemed a little disappointed with his strength because it turned out that infusing sword chi into the tree had little effect. The man looked at the tree and said that the nutrients in the tree's area were very thin and the tree's growth limit was not very significant. But the man thought that it was no big deal, because after all, sword chi was something that didn't require any money. Now the man tried his strength on all the trees around the manor. Half a day had finally passed, and now the black-haired man asked Sun Yulian if she knew why he wanted to accept her as his student. Sun Yulian seemed to pause for a moment as if thinking of a suitable answer. The girl said that she was just an ignorant disciple who didn't understand what the master was saying. Suddenly, the disciple said she felt it was too soon for her. Dirty thoughts had already entered the girl's mind. Finally, the man explained that in the vast Tianyun continent, there would be a heavenly pride from the sky every three or five years. The man also said that because of this pride, extraordinary people were born, whether they came from bloodlines or strong blood. The man also explained that there will be people who become stars in the world of immortality, and along with that, extraordinary powers will soon appear. The man then asked the girl, in the midst of all that, which position Sun Yulian was in. Sun Yulian answered the master's question and said that she was probably in the second stage because she had been accepted as the master's student. But it turned out that Sun Yulian's answer was wrong. The man said that Sun Yulian was not the second. Meanwhile, the dog looked very confused and wondered if Sun Yulian actually had a special body. But for the dog, he should be able to see Sun Yulian's strength if the girl does have special body abilities. Sun Yulian then asked the master if she had a special physique. The man nodded and confirmed her words. The man also mentioned that maybe that was why Sun Yulian was targeted by the Demon King. Elsewhere, at a place on the outskirts, Yu was seen facing the Demon King and the people from the Guangling Immortal Sect. Sun Yulian was still curious as to what kind of physical body she had. The man explained that Sun Yulian's physical body was a sword Dao body that was perfect for practicing swordplay. The dog who heard this said that it was impossible. According to the dog's knowledge, physical bodies can be divided into trash bodies, mortal bodies, spirit bodies, special bodies, rare bodies, divine bodies, and Taoist bodies. The dog emperor alone had only a special body. The dog really didn't expect the little girl to have such a great Taoist body. Now Sun Yulian understood why Guangling's immortal gate and the demon king were always after her. All of this was due to the girl's sword, Dao body. The man explained that Guangling Immortal Gate and the Demon King shouldn't have been fully aware of Sun Yulian's special body condition. Otherwise, they wouldn't have sent several demon generals to capture Sun Yulian. But Sun Yulian said that since she was a child, she hadn't shown any talent. The master explained that a sword Dao's body was different from an ordinary body. It's usually only after she's awakened that Sun Yulian can show her extraordinary talent. The master also mentioned that even people from the Guangling Immortal Gate to the eight great immortal sects in Tianyun probably wouldn't be able to sit still, and they'd fight each other for Sun Yulian's power. Sun Yulian suddenly thought of her entire family who had been slaughtered by the demon clan that cooperated with the Guanglian Immortal Sect. She thought, if only she had been strong at that time, she would have been able to save her entire family. She asked the master to teach her how to awaken her sword Dao body because she wanted revenge. Then the man held up a small wooden branch and asked Sun Yulian to feel his sword intent. Meanwhile, in the southern region of the ancient wilderness, Mulan, Taksiyu, and the master had finally managed to find the senior's manor. The master who saw the manor felt that the building looked ordinary. The master really did not expect there to be someone living in seclusion in that place. Mulan, who was in the front row, asked the master and Taksiyu to be careful 
because it turned out that on top of the manor there was a living vitality that had extraordinary power. Mulan admitted that when the three of them had last been to the manor, that power had not existed. As a result of the vitality energy, the master looked very excited. The master said he had never felt anything like that. Now, the master felt that his energy was not running out. Meanwhile, Taksiyu felt that they were in a spiritual sea as they were wrapped in boundless vitality. Meanwhile, Mulan felt the great power flowing throughout her body. The dog suddenly saw the arrival of people from the Holy Sword Fairy Sect. Taksiyu told the master that the dog below was the stupid dog that Taksiyu, Mulan, and Duan Shuan had previously chased. Taksiyu mentioned that it seemed like the dog was now being kept by the master of the manor. The master took a good look at the dog and realized it was not an ordinary dog, but from the demon clan. Mulan and Taksiyu looked surprised. The master didn't think there could be a demon king in that place. The master looked terrified as the dog seemed ready to pounce on them at any moment. The dog could feel the power of the master because it turned out that the master knew his identity. The dog was sure the master must not be an ordinary person. Now the dog intends to show a little of his abilities. Suddenly the dog barked and asked the three people not to come down immediately. But Mulan and Taksiyu really didn't understand what the dog was saying. And suddenly the owner of the manor came and kicked the dog because he was very annoyed by the dog's voice. The senior was angry because the dog was said to be disturbing the concentration of Sun Yulian, who was understanding sword intent. The man was curious as to what exactly the dog was barking about. Finally, the man saw Mulan and Taksiyu coming to his place again, but the man didn't know who the old uncle with the two girls was. The master didn't expect that the man would easily beat up a demon king who was even at the disturbance stage. And what made the master even more astonished was that the man had made the dog the guard dog of the house. The master suspected that the dark-haired man was a very powerful person. The master guessed that the man might be in the tribulation realm. The master really did not expect there to be such a powerful cultivator in that world. Mulan then introduced the master as their teacher. Mulan said the master was a contemporary master of the C.I. Sword Immortal Sect. Mulan said that their visit to the manor was to thank the senior. The man who owned the manor and the master of the Sacred Sword greeted each other. The master apologized for coming uninvited. Finally, the senior invited them to enter his house. The master was very happy to meet the senior because he looked so powerful that he must have curried favor with the right person. The master was surprised, however, that he could not sense any fluctuations in the spiritual power of the senior's body. The master suspected that this might be because the senior's cultivation base might be very strong. Feeling very curious, the master finally asked if the senior had cultivated to a returning to original state. But the man could only laugh. The master actually believed what he suspected. The man couldn't give any answer because he didn't have any cultivation base. Not long after, Mulan, Taksiyu, and their master came to see the black-haired man. The man asked the three of them to follow him and asked them to leave immediately because Sun Yulian was currently understanding his sword intent. Taksiyu mentioned that the manor was similar to a heavenly blessed place. The master said he was initially worried when he wanted to visit the manor. The master then said that the wood-carved statue that the senior had given to his three disciples had helped the master to solve a big problem. The master said that his visit to the manor was to express his gratitude. Then the man received a gift from the master in the form of a land and a sword. The man was curious. What kind of sword was given by the master? Then the master explained that the soil was not ordinary soil but holy soil. The holy land was known to be brought back by the master's ancestors from eternity, and it is known that the holy soil can be used to cultivate divine medicine. Meanwhile, the sword was the golden red divine sword and treasure of the holy sword fairy gate sect. The man wondered why the master suddenly gave him such a precious treasure. The man wondered if the master intended to ask him to protect the master. But the man knew he could not leave the manor at this time. 
A different thought popped into the master's head. Seeing the expression of the disinterested senior, the senior thought that maybe the black-haired man was actually not interested in the small gift he gave. The master suddenly shouted and told the man not to immediately hate the item he gave. Finally, the man wanted to confirm what kind of holy soil the master had given him. The man could sense with his power that the holy soil was a compound fertilizer. Finally, the man said that he would accept the soil to grow vegetables. The master's eyes and face looked very surprised. As the master had expected, an extraordinary person like that man would even use holy soil just to grow vegetables. But for the master, it was a very good thing to attract the man's attention. The man with blue eyes then invited the master and his two disciples to eat together. The man announced that he had just slaughtered a castle demon and boiled all its meat. The master seemed very happy that he saw the opportunity to lick the man. The man explained that the bull meat should have been cooked by now. He asked Mulan to get the pot of soup, but the master suddenly offered to help. But when the master saw the large pot of soup, he had a look of shock on his face. The pot didn't seem to move at all. The master also seemed to recognize the pot. The master suspected that the pot was an artifact that fell from the sky a few days ago. There had been many sects searching for the artifact, but the master really didn't expect that the sacred artifact would be used as a stew pot by the man. Meanwhile, the black-haired man felt bad for allowing an old man to lift such a large pot. Finally, the man offered to carry the big pot. Mulan looked very astonished at the master's strange behavior. The master asked Mulan if she had noticed the pot being carried by the man. The master explained that the pot was an artifact that fell into the mortal world a few days ago. Mulan was shocked to hear that. The blue-haired disciple then asked the master what they should do now. The master said he was a little worried that the recent Tianpo events had something to do with the man. The master mentioned that the problem was not something they could solve. While whispering, Mulan was curious as to how high the senior's cultivation level actually was. The master was also skeptical, but the senior was probably at the immortal level. Mulan finally understood why she couldn't feel her senior's true cultivation when she first met him. Finally, Mulan called her senior an earth immortal. Mulan felt very grateful for not offending her senior the first time they met. If Mulan had made trouble with her senior at that time, she would have been in big trouble. Finally, the black-haired man had finished preparing all the bull meat soup dishes on the table. The man asked Mulan, Taksiyu, and the master to eat together. When the three people tried the dish, they could feel great pleasure. The master felt very happy as the food contained a great deal of spiritual energy, while Taksiyu could enjoy the delicate flavor of the beef stew. Taksiyu also murmured that the beef had a very good blend of flavors. Mulan also felt the same way. For the girl, when she ate the senior's cooking, she felt like she was swimming in a cow pasture. The master, Mulan, and Tak Siyu thanked him for hosting them so well. The master of the Holy Sword Fairy Sect also said that they would no longer trouble the senior in the future. Meanwhile, the senior stated that he had time to entertain his guests. After eating the beef soup, the master's cultivation level suddenly broke through to the realm of transformation. Mulan was shocked by this, but the master asked his disciple to remain calm. The master said that the senior's manner was filled with an abundance of golden dao. The master even mentioned that the senior's sword chi was soaring into the sky. In addition, the master noticed a soup broth from the divine cauldron of the nine heavens. The master said that breaking through the spirit transformation stage was common, as there were many factors that influenced it. Now the manor owner went to his field and saw that it was ready, and by using the compound fertilizer given by the master, the man was confident that he could grow all kinds of fruits in his manor. Suddenly, from a distance, the man saw a shining fruit. Upon approaching, the man knew that the fruit was a ginseng fruit tree. But as the man approached the tree, he suddenly saw someone there. Sun Yulian looked very surprised, that the fruit had turned into a human. The man with blue eyes wondered if it was because he applied compound fertilizer that the ginseng tree became an essence. But it turned out that the tree did not become an essence, but received a fairy spirit. Sun Yulian saw under the old tree a human form of a very thick essence, 
and Sun Yulian said, it was a sign to become an essence. But because under the old tree there is a lot of immortal energy, so Sun Yulian believes it is not an essence, but will become a fairy. Meanwhile, the dog who saw the event thought, when the tree gathers spirits and turns into a spirit, then there will be a vision of the essence of life that penetrates heaven and earth. Meanwhile, in various places, everyone could feel an extremely strong aura due to the events at the old tree. At the same time, there was a green light radiating into the sky. Everyone was wondering if there was a tree that had finally turned into essence because that green light seemed to have the brilliance of a tide with surging vitality. They were all confused as to what monster would soon be born. Meanwhile, on a hilltop, two people were also watching the event. One of the men wearing brown clothes spoke to a man named Huang Tian, that the life essence that had just appeared was likened to unlimited power. The man in brown was worried that the transformation process would not be easy. The man named Huang Tian also agreed with what his colleague said. Huang Tian said he also did not know who was the master behind the tree god who turned into a fairy. Huang Tian said the person had the ability to turn trees into spirits. Huang Tian thought that the person was very extraordinary. Huang Tian then invited his partner to confirm what really happened. Finally, the two of them went to the manor. After a few minutes of waiting, the figure of the fairy finally showed a human form. A man came out of the old tree and saluted the manor owner. The fairy said he was very grateful for the enlightenment given by the noble immortal, because finally the fairy could get a spiritual body and could come to that world. The male fairy said, from now on he would look after the manor. The fairy then asked his master to give him a name. Since the fairy was reborn as a ginseng fruit and turned into a fairy, the man said it could be assumed that the man was favored by Tao. Eventually, the man gave the fairy the name Zhenyuan. The fairy was very grateful to the master and promised to do everything in her power to protect him. The black-haired man then gave the fairy the task of guarding the manor. The man really didn't expect that the Holy Land had such extraordinary power that it could make fairies condense. Sun Yulian was amazed at the power possessed by the master. The girl knew the fairy was an immortal. Sun Yulian did not expect that the master could actually make a fairy immortal. It wasn't long before the Demon King clan and Guangling Immortal Sect's troops arrived at the master's manor. Yu told the demon elder that the manor was the thing he talked to them about before. But Yu felt that there was something wrong in that place. Yu mentioned that the aura of the fairy spirit that floated into the sky earlier already looked faint now. But suddenly, the demon king seemed to burst out laughing and made Yu surprised. The demon king mentioned that the hundred thousand barren mountains were the territory owned by the demon clan. The demon king said, They have the opportunity to be able to attack the manor owner and no one will be able to touch his demon army. Yu confirmed what the demon king said, and said that the demon king had a strong aura and very great strength. So, Yu is sure that the demon king can definitely defeat the manor owner. Meanwhile, Sun Yulian continued her activities to feel the core of the sword in order to activate her Tao body. And the manor owner was seen relaxing, and suddenly the man saw that Yu's army had come to his place. The man didn't expect that the Demon Street and Gwangling Immortal sect would return so quickly. Yu became curious when he saw the dog in the manor. Exactly how strong was the power possessed by the dog demon? The same thing was also thought by the Demon King. He could see that the dog could even absorb the spiritual energy around it, and even add cultivation. One of the Gwangling Immortal Sect's people mentioned that she didn't expect to find a dog with extraordinary talents in the ancient territory of the southern desert. The girl said that the dog must be a genius among monsters. The white-haired girl also said that if they could take the dog as a spiritual pet, then it could change their future. The people from the Gwangling Immortal Sect burst out laughing and asked if the dog was the guardian of the manor. But the Demon King knew that the dog belonged to the Demon Clan. The Demon King wondered how the dog could become a human slave. The Demon King then asked the dog if the animal would follow him and become the right hand of the Demon King. The dog seemed very surprised by the Bull King's invitation. The Bull King said if the dog would obey his orders, 
Then the king promised to give the dog the territory. The bull king made sweet promises to the dog. The bull king said he would give the dog the throne of the emperor, and the dog could even become a saint. But the dog looked down on the bull king and said that the bull had acted wildly by coming to that place. Knowing that his offer was rejected by the dog, the bull looked very upset and called the dog a stupid animal. In fact, if the dog would obey his orders, then the dog could eat and drink properly. The bull king then gave the dog a choice. The dog was asked to crawl and kowtow to him, or the dog chose to just die because it had embarrassed the demon clan. The dog didn't look scared at all and immediately attacked the bull king, but the bull king seemed unharmed. The bull taunted the dog and asked if that was the extent of the dog's strength. The dog looked very upset and said that if it wasn't for his previous injury, he wouldn't have let the bull mock him so easily. Suddenly the dog let out an aura that made the bull king look very surprised. The bull didn't expect the dog to be a demon king. Finally, the dog and the bull clashed with each other, until making people from the guangling immortal sect bounce. They wondered what was really going on. You told the sect people, if the dog was the demon king. Whereas before, you was very sure that the dog was just a stupid and cheap dog. Suddenly, the people from the sect were shocked that a demon king could be made a house guard by the manor owner. That meant that the man who lived in the manor was a very great person. Not long after, the black-haired man and Sun Yulian came to greet them. The man who owned the manor didn't expect you to actually bring all his people. Meanwhile, Sun Yulian looked very scared because you brought the eldest of the sect along with the bull demon king. People immediately looked at the manor owner. The sect elder couldn't feel that the man had cultivation, but he wondered how the man could conquer the demon king. The elder was sure there must be something strange in the place. The elder then asked the man if he was the one who killed all the disciples in his sect. The man's face looked very mocking and asked back, what would happen if he did kill the disciples of the sect that he called a bunch of bastards and scum? The disciples of the Gwangling Immortal Sect were very unhappy to hear the man's words, but the elder tried to restrain their emotions. The elder knew that the manor owner must have intentionally provoked them. The elder knew that the man in front of him had no fear at all. The elder was worried that the man's strength was beyond his imagination. After seeing and meeting the manor owner in person, the elder of the Gwangling Immortal Sect thought, It looks like the black-haired man is not a random person. Even now, the bull demon king was entangled with the dog. Now the elder began to fear that his guangling immortal gate was on the verge of collapse. Seeing the man's dangerous potential, the elder finally saluted him and said that his highness must have seen Sun Yulian's talent and was interested in teaching him directly. Meanwhile, the disciples of the sect were silent and helpless. The elder said that in that immortal world, strength was something that was highly respected. So the elder was willing to give up and let Sun Yulian be by the side of the noble one. The elder even said that if the noble one wanted to vent his anger, then the elder was ready to accept all the consequences. The man with the blue eyes was astonished and said the situation was not what he had imagined. The people from the sect should have attacked him. Finally, the elders and disciples left. But suddenly the noble one stopped them. The man couldn't just let those people go. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to increase the domain value of his sword. The man said that Sun Yulian was now his disciple. The man also said that Guangling's immortal gate had teamed up with the devil to destroy the peace in that world. The noble one said that was a very despicable act. The man said he wouldn't just let them go. But suddenly the attitude of one of the sect members became very aggressive. One of the elders said the white-haired man, they should have killed the man from the start. His colleague also mentioned that the man in front of them was just bluffing. But the elder hit his colleague's body from behind with his sword and finally made him fall unconscious. The elder mentioned that he did promise to give Sun Yulian to the demon king, but the sect elder claimed he had no intention of destroying Sun Yulian's life. The sect leader said that all the orders came from someone called the Fifth Elder. The man who owned the Maur could only remain silent and mutter that the sect leader was a very cruel person.
Even the elder did not hesitate to kill one of his own colleagues before really knowing the power possessed by the manor owner. No matter what you thought, the elder of the Gwangling sect was indeed very cruel. Now the man wondered, how could people have considered Gwangling's immortal sect as a holy sect all this time? The man also felt that the immortal world was an inhuman world. Now the man felt very lucky because he was now a competent person. The blue-eyed man thought he couldn't let the evil elder continue to exist in the immortal cultivation world. Finally, the man spoke up and asked the elder not to keep talking nonsense. The man even called the sex elder a lord, which made the elder look very surprised. The man also said that what the guangling immortal sect had done to Sun Yulian was unforgivable. The elder asked him not to make life difficult for them. The elder said that the life of an elder he had just killed wasn't enough of an apology. The elder was still trying to be modest and said that if the noble wouldn't give up altogether, then their guangling immortal sect would be destroyed. The elder asked the man why he seemed to be overreacting just because of an apprentice. The noble one then stated that he would leave all the decisions to Sun Yulian. The noble one asked Sun Yulian to attack all the enemies who had ruined her life. Sun Yulian looked very surprised and admitted that the cultivation bases of the sect's disciples were much higher than her own. The venerable suddenly handed the disciple a sword and said that Sun Yulian already understood a bit of her sword intent, so the venerable was confident that Sun Yulian would be able to do it. The elder also said that some revenge should be taken personally, so Sun Yulian was asked to go up against her enemy with confidence. The elder made an offer. As long as they could touch Sun Yulian, the elder promised not to attack the elder of the sect. Even though the elder knew that the sword in Sun Yulian's hand was a peerless sword, the master was sure that Sun Yulian hadn't even reached the golden core yet. In the end, the senior asked Sun Yulian to immediately advance against the disciples of the Guangling immortal sect. The girl looked very upset because they were the ones who had killed her family. And Sun Yulian said that today she would take revenge on the sect. The elder looks very upset after hearing Sun Yulian's words and calls his former student very shameless. Finally, the elder asked Yu Chizi to fight Sun Yulian. Yu looks very arrogant and tells Sun Yulian not to be arrogant just because she's holding a divine sword and there's someone backing her up. Suddenly, Sun Yulian swung her sword so fast that it made Yu very surprised. And without Yu realizing it, Sun Yulian had managed to defeat the man very easily. The system announced that Sun Yulian had successfully killed the cultivator, Yu Chizi. Now the host had earned 400 points. The sect elder was quite surprised at Sun Yulian's strength. But the elder said that Sun Yulian wasn't at the Golden Core cultivation stage yet. The elder then asked the third elder to defeat Sun Yulian. The elder asked the third elder not to kill Sun Yulian. Now the black-haired man was a little worried even though the sect leader did say he wouldn't interfere in his disciples' duels. But he was worried that in the future, the elder would take revenge on him because Sun Yulian had killed his disciples. Deep down, the elder was very upset that his guangling immortal sect had been humiliated. The elder was determined that after leaving that place, he would find a way to defeat the manor owner in the future. The third elder prepared to beat Sun Yulian up, the third elder said she immediately cut off Sun Yulian's hand. The third elder also said that she wanted to see how Sun Yulian's teacher would fight tooth and nail to defend Sun Yulian.